decided to do it, mm -hmm. whether it was find a job, go to school, do something, something. You know, something but I was wasn't going to strike your fancy. I wasn't going to sell out. Right. Sell out right, to right, the right, man. Right, right, right. Money was, you know, not an issue. So I met most interesting people. I stayed at some communes in Calif uh, Colorado on the way and people doing seances and calling back the dead and all kinds of shit went on. And so I lived on the beach for a while, this guy that was making candles and selling. I'm, I'm kind of having a vision of, for me, Sebastopol. Um, <laughs> Sebastopol. No, Into the Wild, right? Did anybody, uh, I never anyone that. in the book or no. the movie? No. I think it was written by John Krakauer. But anyway. Okay. Sounds very similar, but go ahead. Yeah. So there's all, you know, I picked up hitchhikers on the way and they all wanted to stay and hang out with me because I had the van to sleep in. Uh, you know, I got rid of them, kept moving. And it was a time in my life where I felt like, you know, I, in college, high school, I had so many girlfriends and this and that. I said, you know what? I'm going to put that on the shelf for a while. So I just wasn't looking for like any kind of love relationship. I was looking for a purpose. So I went to Santa Barbara and I met this, these, got out of my cars. I'm going to go get a newspaper, see if I can get a job, need some gas money. I'm running out of money here. So this, these uh, two foreigners, one I think was from France and one was, I don't know where from, but they said, hey man, uh, what do you think is the purpose of life? I said, really? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Perfect timing. Said, Great question. <laughs> I, I think Ding. it's uh, to be happy. What do you think? They said, that's what we think. Why don't you come over to our house for dinner? I said, hell Yeah. Free food? <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so there I had a Mexican cape. I remember I had a red Mexican cape to keep warm and my hair to my shoulders. <laughs> oh, come on. And a cape? A, a little That's awesome. So, I had a little sword <laughs> hanging on my ear that had my name on it. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> this old hippie made for me, custom made. So I went there and all these people, different countries were there, all looking pretty happy and saying, you know what? Um we got this teaching that we're doing that's saying that we could all be one big family in the world. And why do we have to have different religions and different belief systems and every, why can't people just be like brother and sister? Pretty fucking awesome. Right. That sounds cool. Yeah. yeah. So, so I thought, yeah, the world's kind of crooked, cockeyed and messed up. So why not, you know, listen to this. And it was pretty cool. Was a, he's a Korean evangelist guy that had a, he had a vision and a dream about mixing the Asian philosophy of respect and honor and Confucianism and all the ethics they teach and Christian ethics in the Bible, mixing them together, making it like some kind of really beautiful existence of living. Imagine all the people. Yeah. Right. That right. song was just going through my head as you're telling the story. say I'm a dreamer. I'm not the only one. So, <laughs> right. So then... I got totally, totally enthralled about, yeah, I can have a purpose that maybe this really can grow and expand because everybody was searching in those days, like really searching. And I think maybe that aspect's kind of missing mm -hmm. in the in Well, there was the like a lot youth. of, maybe like a little burnout from like uh, Vietnam and stuff too, right? Yep. Hare Krishnas were banging their All cymbals everybody on the was like streets tired, all that bullshit. And orange. And everybody was like searching for alternative lifestyle. So it was very easy for these people to evangelize and, and say, Hey, here's a, here's a counterculture. And so it got, and then we had fundraising things going on. So it got projected in the news that look, they're everywhere. If you go back and look at news scripts, they'll say, they're everywhere. They're taking over the airports. They're right. on every city corner. <laughs> They're selling flowers. The moon is taking over the... And then we thought, oh, yeah, right on. All that's right. our that's <laughs> what we're, right. right. we're doing. So, Spreading the word. So people thought we were all brainwashed and in zombies. Oh, yeah. They start calling us zombies. I didn't even people, I would tell them I'm you know, selling some candies or moonies for the for the moonies and, and people pull a knife on me. <gasps> Damn. Get the fuck up. Here, pull. I had a guy point a shotgun in my face, so I just ran. Right. Oh right. my that god! Kind of, that kind of uh, fear was around. It still is. Yeah. <laughs> There's okay. some uptight some, motherfuckers. Not necessarily yeah, around, yeah. around here. The Moonies, but yeah. in general. Uh, no, but I mean so, uptight people. You know. Yeah. yeah. That just don't like alternative. Get off my lawn. I don't yeah, want. I don't want to expand my mind. I don't want to understand the status anything. Quo, so it's yeah. something that they're afraid of. Yeah. Right. And it took a lot of guts to do that. 
-hmm. even my own family thought there and those days there was something called deprogrammers that they called parents and said if you pay me a couple thousand bucks i'll go deprogram your kid and get him out of there oh my god and my parents told me they were even contacted i said look i'm doing this because this is what i want to do nobody's like forcing you put a watch in front of me back <laughs> right, and right. forth and hypnotize me so anyway part of the whole thing was that um we lived very purely like brother and sister we lived in houses where like all the guys lived in one room the girls in like the mor other morally pure yeah right it was you know there were some there were some things probably went on behind the scenes but nah. Nah. Yeah, of course, yeah. like anything. Not as bad as the Catholic Church, but <laughs> yeah. oh, jeez. But Those anyway, guys. that was that. That was a that was a real training, and it was a real like a discipline, and it's a time where I was spiritually really challenging myself to be like this person uh, that could be part of a world community that was a really caring and good person, and being raise a family that would have some vision of being. In a, in a, not only a dream, but whatever you call it, Buddha, Allah, God, whatever your your divine thing is, have that be your guide that you can be a good person for the world. And and right. we have we wouldn't have all these killings and hate and all that stuff. Well, there was a lot. I mean, there was like there's never war fatigue, but you know, also there had to be like a thirst for peace. Whereas like tr countries that trade, you know, generally the philosophy is countries that trade don't go to war with each other. And I would imagine countries that just interact uh, with each other too, you know? So why creating kind of a group of people that are multinational was, you know, very good point. That's a really good point because that what the marriage was all about that, that if you marry somebody from another country, how could you go to war? I married a German lady. Mm -hmm. So this was going to be a bridge to Germans and Americans, like forget right. your past. You know, I mean, right. I, I, and the whole training of getting your mindset right for this was that as long as this woman had the same kind of purpose and outlook and wanted to live the same kind of ethical life, that it doesn't matter if she was black, white, yellow, red, mm -hmm. if she was 300 pounds or 50 pounds. That was not the point. Right. So, I mean, if you kind of could get that and uh, that outlook that, look, every every woman is, is a daughter of, the universe daughter of god if you could see the gem in there so i kind of went with that you know I, I everybody was supposed to go in with that mm -hmm. so we go into this ceremony where okay now if you've been, gone to this training for i think it was like you had to like seven years and be going through the whole spiritual training and oh, discipline wow. Being celibate for seven years when I was 22 to 29, that was not oh easy, God. dude. Yeah. And, okay, you, you lost know, me. <laughs> I'm, I'm just kidding. Hey, I had a lot of, I wet, mean, lot of wet dreams. But... No, but for the, you know what, though? For the right. <laughs> but um, you said earlier in the story that you had, even before all of this, before you started your journey, you kind of put that whole love relationship kind of part of your life on a shelf for a bit because you were just really trying to find yourself and try to find what it was that was going to make you a happy human. Yeah, right. So yeah, so all kidding, were kind of all kidding aside, there. I think there are few among us who wouldn't trade that for a purpose, right? Like a clear... Who would or uh, wouldn't? Would. Well, t think of this For a clear defined purpose? Think if, if you were a hippie like me. I was a hippie. Oh, you're probably yeah. sick of all that anyway. Yeah. And, and it was okay like every time you meet a, a girl, meet a guy or going to meet a girl... It's okay to go have sex because it's right. just free love. It's free love. Like this woman here, that woman there, or this woman several times, every time you see each other. And it got to be like eating a hamburger. Right. It's like, okay. Oh, I like hamburgers. Okay, <laughs> nothing's off limit, but you know. <laughs> right. Uh, you can get enough vagina after a while, right? That's like, for me, I mean, but. I think, that, so wait, wait, I have, I, to, I have to step in there step because. In. From a female perspective, I've done a lot, I've done a bit, not a lot of research in this last year or so about the, um, what happens to a woman, her hormones when she has sex, like in terms of like, it, it goes deeper, but it's kind of all along this line of like, why do women keep choosing the bad, quote, the bad guy or keep going back to that guy? And there's all of this hormonal data that goes with it. And, and to your point, Women during that age who were engaging in this like free love and sex with whoever shows up in front and is interesting, 
I'm actually kind of curious now how well that worked out for them. Because typically, like after about three times having sex, you're, a woman is connected to the point where it's hard to disengage from a particular person. So I'm just yeah. curious. Yeah, we'll have to find somebody. I think, I think that's a really good point because well, men too, if they allow themselves. Because mm-hmm. I've kind of really kind of tried to dive into it too. When you have sex with somebody, you kind of exchange some kind of energy that that person's like in your head mm-hmm. with men. But if a man just thinking, I just want to get my orgasm off and my dick's hard and it feels it better after I orgasm, then they leave. Go on to the next one. You can do that. I don't you know if women to, can, but men yeah. can do that pretty easily. Yeah, don't look at me, man. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. I think about. women would like yeah. to think they could <laughs> do that, but, but it's not that easy for them. Yeah, but also men have that capacity to, to mm-hmm. as I say, there's male, female in everybody. You know? Right. But I, that's a really, that's a good point because it does, something happens that connects mm-hmm. people. And, but that was, that was a really hard thing to do. That was hard. So you go through through that seven years, but when you're doing it with a group of people that are doing that, right, right, and you're fasting and you're like praying at midnight and you're trying to get yourself cleaned out and be this like super loving and seeing the divine person and everybody you meet, and we we would go like door to door all day long doing this proselytizing, selling Mm -hmm. stuff, and I mean it was a discipline to every door you knock on Uh, to get to, to say. Look, this is another divine human going to answer the door. And that was fucking hard. Right. That was hard. Because right. some days you just didn't want to give a shit. And I would imagine, right? Yeah. It still doesn't take and the uh, kind of all so, the, call it human faults or whatever out of us, right? And I think, so you, with, I think without that part of stage of my life, I would have been a much different person than I could possibly Im- imagine what that person would be like, but I probably would have divorced 20 times yeah. married and divorced 20 times. But anyway, so I went into this ceremony like this and the, the guy that was the spiritual guru guy claimed that he could look at you and see seven generations of the stuff that you inherited. Oh, and that characteristics, you mean like mm-hmm, pers- okay. or tendencies or things you're working out karmically or whatever. Mm-hmm. And that he would put you with somebody that had the ability to help work out those items. Right? Kind of the so, matchmaking part of it, right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I, right. so I went in the room with that kind of mindset that, Hey, all right, I'm going to get this mate. That's going to make some awesome children with me. And we're going to just rock and roll with this thing. Right. So, and I'm ready to have a woman. <laughs> Seven, <laughs> Seven years is a long time. Yeah, it's like, yeah, I right, got some whatever. seats for you, girl. <laughs> <laughs> so, Were you wearing boxers or briefs? I just want to know. <laughs> oh, <stop>. Whitey tidies. <laughs> <laughs> so the, this guy goes up and down the aisle and says, hey, you stand up and you stand up. And he looks and looks. No, you know. Then he says, okay, you two. Then you go in a room, you sit down. And you had an option to talk a bit and say, you know, do you want to go through with this or you want to go back in the room? And it's kind of thought of if you go back in the room that you're like an unfaithful person. Oh, yeah. So, but you did have veto power. Yeah. Okay. Veto power. So I didn't, I didn't enforce it. Right. Oh, okay. (laughs) And she was all on board too. Yeah. She was on board. There could be a lot of like, of right ons though too. Like, yeah, nice. And yeah, it's like, and and then you go to your buddy and say, "Damn, you did good." Yeah. <laughs> so, God, it's so weird. It's like pulling a name out of a hat and going down the aisle. Oh, it's more than that. Uh, Spiritual leader help. I'm getting very yeah. uncomfortable right now. No. <laughs> kind of like no. when I watched the, the mirror or whatever black black mirror. mirror. Yeah. A whole no, it story. took it took a lot of you know. So I think in the end, like half of the marriage is divorced. Well, it takes mm-hmm. faith too. Yeah, right? it takes faith. Yeah, and it takes. I mean, it takes really believing that there is a there is a spark of that mm-hmm. in every person if you can find it and love it. I mean, in general, and I, and I it, feel like that's such a great, regardless of whether you put a label on it like Moonies or any other sort of like philosophy or religion, in general, it's like, why can't we just all love each other in a way? Everybody's got great stuff. Everybody's got challenges. But like you said, everybody's got that little gem in them. 
Like, yeah, if you just can find wow. it. Yeah, you have to look for it sometimes. I. Th- 